how often do you get to sit around a rocket scientist and pick their brain? So today we're gonna to be covering things such as the flat earth theory and Martian bushcrafting. Stay tuned. <laughs> Uh, Jacqueline, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to the camera because we've been having this fascinating conversation and I just felt like this needed to be a video. Why don't you give them a little bit about your background as well because I'm not smart enough to even know all the stuff that you have done over your life. So if you would just tell the audience a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm so grateful to be here. Thank you very much. And this is really the start for me for earth style bushcrafting but i wanted to be in space exploration ever since i was five years old and i'm a child of the apollo era i'm here for the fuel the fires and also the silver wolves and uh, so i'm learning about terrestrial bushcrafting but because of my love for space exploration i really think of it as a first step towards martian bush bushcrafting so in martian bushcrafting we're going to take the technologies that we have today we're gonna to go to Mars. We're gonna set up first simply, just kind of like you've seen in various movies, but then we're gonna move on and we're gonna set up domes. We're gonna set up greenhouses and eventually we're gonna to get to terraforming. And when we get to terraforming, maybe we'll need to use some, the GMO type of plants, use CRISPR technology and be able to create plants that will help us with Martian technology. So I gotta make water and grow food on a planet where nothing grows. I am the greatest botanist on this planet. Woo! In your face, Neil Armstrong. But I'd like to start today with looking like something like this. Way back in the day. A shemog. You're, a shemog, you're telling me right, that we're gonna be using shemogs on this, Mars. This was a piece of modern technology. This right here, as we learned in the Roman times, was definitely a piece of very important technology yes, it was. used by everybody depending on your we just did a life. hygiene class here at the silver wolves event and so we learned that this was something that the community would use uh to wipe their asses well that's one way to put it thank you very much more than i would say okay here we go I'm sorry you fit into a bucket there of goes vinegar into the, into the bucket of vinegar on mars i hope we don't have to go with that but um, most of you have seen that movie the martian and um, <coughs> Well, we're gonna to have to go to some simple ways when it goes, when we go back there. Right. But we're gonna start off at a little level of technology that here would seem like it's way up there. But when we get back down to the roots, to what does it mean to be the first people on Mars? It's gonna be taking our base technology. What is the lowest the we lowest can- The lowest forms of technology that we have. The lowest form we can do to survive. So we're gonna to have to take our ability to create food, create water, uh, create our air. You know, it's that whole thing of threes, right? Yes. Three minutes without air. Or circulation. Three days without water. water. Three, three weeks, weeks without, without food. food. And then. 30 hours without rest. Oof, on Mars. <laughs> Who knows <laughs> Who if we'll make it that far. Happen? We're gonna have to survive dust storms, dust devils, oh and uh, all of that. but. Are all the survival skills that like we're teaching at this event mm -hmm. right now, are those applicable? Like are those skill sets that the astronauts or aeronauts, and I don't even know the difference in the two to begin with. But... Well, let's just call people Martian colonists because that's okay. what we really want to go for. Astronauts are a special group of people that uh, go up and go around the, the earth, go in orbit around the earth, go to the space station. Hopefully we'll be going to the moon and going to some of those uh, potential colonies where uh, we're deep in the craters where there's never been sunlight. We're going to find water and they can set up there. But when we go to Mars, we believe that underneath the surface, at some depth below the surface, besides at the poles, we're going to find water. But in the initial stages, we're going to have to take it because we said that rule of threes. And so Anybody who goes to Mars as a Martian colonist is really going to be a Martian bushcrafter. How cool is that? I just got one question. Does that mean I get to get on the flight with my knife? <laughs> <laughs> Can I take the knife on well, the aeroplane? All those bushcrafters, your number one thing is you got to have your gotta knife. Got to have a knife. Gotta That's have right. A knife. One way or another, you got to have a knife. Got to have a knife. So they'll have their tools. It might be a multi-tool. Okay. 
but they're going to have to start. Space age bushcraft tools. <laughs> <laughs> Space age survival I think, tools. I, I think there's a company for somebody. Really? Out there for space. Space age bushcraft oh, tools. Oh, we need to get on it before Elon. Bushcraft. Yeah. Boy, no kidding there. We need to lead the charge into the future <laughs> and fuel okay. the fires. We just got it started right here. Okay, that's it. There is documented proof. We don't have a registered trademark yet. We don't have any patents, but we're, it's uh, applied for. All that is applied for. Martian bushcrafting started right here, right now. <laughs> In Morganton, Georgia. At Silver Wolves. At the Silver Wolves. At event. Silver Wolves. <laughs> At Dr. Crystal Gary's place. And Dr. Jackie. And Dr. Jackie is leading the charge. 27 years in NASA. Every paycheck coming from NASA in some way or other until I started my own company a couple years ago. How cool is that, right? Related to plants. And uh, been involved in Martian agriculture for the past 30 plus years. That's awesome. And uh, so my goal has been to build initially a small test case, a little Martian greenhouse that's automated that you can send on a bigger spacecraft. Okay. We call it a test bed in the NASA world. Y'all writing NASA, this down? NASA parlance. And uh, take some of that Martian soil, put it into the test bed Martian greenhouse put some LED light on it, grow some plants and start to see what we get, how it works, what the stresses are. I vote for potatoes. Potatoes. potatoes yes. I think we understand potatoes. I think we've seen the movie, The Martian. Great example. <laughs> Growing I have potatoes. so many questions. Potatoes worked really well. So I think we can then do that, but now we have, some people don't like it, to eat it, genetically modified organisms, okay, food and such. But I think we can use some of that uh, new technology, they call CRISPR technology to gene splice this and that, oh my and God. make some plants that will help us to make plants that create more compounds that'll help us terraform Mars. Oh, this is so and cool. And make it happen more Come closer. sooner Speaking to the than microphone. it might have if we just went with everyday stuff. So we briefly were talking about this earlier. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, I definitely agree with doing that kind of stuff from Mars. The question is, could we take something like a conifer tree mm -hmm. that creates tons and tons of oxygen out of carbon dioxide yeah. and utilize it as, instead of having a machine that processes oxygen, letting the conifer, I think that's what you're saying, kind of the goal, mid goal is, is a self-sustainable I don't think we're anywhere near her level, and I think anything that we ask is probably not intelligent Oh, what I'm asking enough. is dumb, but <laughs> what I'm asking is dumb. I know that. I'm, I'm, I'm interested in what her thoughts are on it. Well, it's a really good idea, and I don't think it's in the world of impossibility. Okay, I'm a possibility thinking. It's like, what might we be able to do? What is the logical sequence, you know, A through B through C all the way up to Z that we can do that all makes sense. Not so you're building all your protocols and SOPs and it's Absolutely. all based off of reason. I'm all about for your decision tree. Yes, process-based engineering, flow diagrams, standard operating procedures, how we make things work in a very logical step-by-step step by step sequence. So I think that the people now, there's a lot of people doing biohacking. I'm not one of them, but I know there's biohacking labs doing CRISPR technology. That's a certain it's kind happening. of- It's happening. a certain kind of genetic engineering. And I think the conifer tree is a really good idea. And splicing, maybe- Or it produces fruit. Or, or you know, genes, yeah. this and that, or even just trying it out naturally so, in yeah. one of these test beds, we'll call them test beds on Mars, starting to get things used to the Martian environment. Mm -hmm. Like a little bit in here, a little bit there, a little bit more of this, a little bit more of that. Well, I asked for one reason. If yes. we're gonna be bushcrafting on Mars, I gotta have fat wood. <laughs> <laughs> and we need a pine species. You know, this is all Alrighty. super interesting and everything. And I think the thing that our uh, audience, uh, people like me, uh, with my intelligence level is wondering, why haven't somebody in your community challenged these flat earth people? Why, why haven't y'all made a movement to say, look, this is it. Here's the gavel, gavel down, stop. I mean, Because I, I want this video to go viral because I know that you're gonna be able to provide the answer for me to tell the audience why the earth is round and not flat. 
Here's my gavel. Okay, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it right now. The gavel is down. Flat earthers are nuts. <laughs> <laughs> and there you have it. Flat earthers are nuts. But you were speaking earlier about triangulation. Like we've known for a long time that the earth is actually round. Yes. Because if there are flat earthers that are gonna be in the comment section, which I imagine they're gonna be, uh, they always bring up the laser thing. Like if you could shoot a laser out far enough, it would be on the same plane. If you had the tennis ball that was full of water and you spun it at the rate that the earth is spinning and the around the sun and our solar system and how fast it's traveling, that the water would all just escape off of the tennis ball. Can you like touch on any of these little examples that they always bring up? Well, I'll also say, never underestimate the imagination of the human mind. <laughs> okay. It's too complicated for someone like us to understand, isn't it? I think anybody can think up anything and make it real for themselves. And they can come up with experiments to try to justify to try their to thesis. justify it, but don't really hold up to the scientific method. Our world oh, is made up of being sense. able to have an experiment, a well, hypothesis originally, an, followed by experiment, repeatability, proving that something is correct or incorrect. Now, way back when, we don't have to get into the details of it, but let's just say Egyptian times, okay. one fella watched the motion of the sun across the sky and watched how the sun fell into a well on one side of Egypt, down at the south, rode his chariot as fast as he could up to the north side, tracked the time, saw how long, you know, the distance it was, God, and how, long process this how the sun fell into the well there and said, Oh, that means the Earth has a curvature. So he is able to calculate the whole entire Based circumference on science. of the Earth by observation that was completely repeatable time after time after time. There was no weird explanation of, well, this time it didn't work because of that, or there's this interfering, you know, confounding object, or this kind of thing in the atmosphere, whatever kind of business you might want to say could interfere with it. It's repeatable time after time. So we've known for thousands and thousands of years that the earth is round. Thousands of years we've known the earth is round. Dr. Jackie, Absolutely. thank you so much for coming to our event and bushcrafting with us. And we've even got a small little crowd going now that we're on film or whatever. But there you have it. So if you're uh, honey smack digging the video, like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell. And until next time, keep fueling those fires. By the way, even rocket scientists carry knives. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you know. Hello, I'm Dr. Jackie. And this is a little photo that was taken with my cohorts just before we started graduate school at the University of Texas at Austin. So there's Neil to my left and Dr. Steve is on my right and that's me in the middle, Dr. Jackie. And I'm so happy to talk with you today and give you my perspective on Martian bushcrafting. <laughs>